Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Quijano. Thank you for joining us. President Trump is taking aim at the special counsel's team. On Twitter, the president accused those who worked with Robert Mueller of dishonesty, saying they are, quote, illegally leaking information to the press about the Russia investigation. That comment comes after some within the special counsel's office were reportedly unhappy with how the attorney general handled their findings. They said the information uncovered was more damaging than William Barr made it seem. Late last month, Barr issued a summary of the report. It said President Trump did not collude with Russia during the 2016 campaign and that Mueller made no determination whether justice was obstructed. The Justice Department says it is working on redaction, so the report can be released. However, House Democrats voted last week to authorize a subpoena for an unredacted version. They're now poised to issue it when ready. Our check on the Sunday morning show starts with what one key Democratic lawmaker hopes to see in the Mueller report. Well, I don't know when we're going to receive it. Uh, uh, Attorney General Barr said by the middle of April, it could be the end of this week or beginning of next week. But the important thing is not uh, do we get it this week or next week. The important thing is what do we get. We are demanding and we have a right, uh, Congress has a right to the entire report with no redactions whatsoever. Uh, I don't regret calling out this president for what I consider deeply unethical and improper conduct. Not a bit. And I think the moment that we start to think that, uh, that we should back away uh, from exposing uh, this kind of malfeasance and corruption is a dangerous point that there seems to be some concern that the full report may be more damaging than the bar summary. Right, do you share that? No, because there's two conclusions that are important here uh, to, to reiterate, and that is in, uh, in General Barr's letter, he said, I'm only going to discuss the principal conclusions. And what were those principal uh, in, uh, conclusions? No obstruction. No collusion. What is the plan to get out of this current crisis? Number one, Mexico has to continue to do what they're doing uh, by preventing people from coming into Mexico and then accepting people that we send them. Number two, the Northern Triangle countries have to prevent their own people from leaving. And number three, and this is the one we don't get a chance to talk about mo uh, uh, enough, Congress must act. The laws are what is acting as this giant magnet for these uh, illegal immigrants, and Congress has to chase those laws, to change those laws. Let's bring in Ben Dominich. He's the co-founder and publisher of The Federalist. Ben, thanks so much for joining us. Let's with start you. with the Mueller report. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler is now authorized to issue a subpoena for the unredacted Mueller report. However, the Democrat says he won't do so immediately. Do we have a sense of the timeline that we might be looking at here? I think that, uh, as uh, Chairman Nadler uh, indicated, it's it's very high likelihood that we're going to see this report within the next uh, week, or possibly the end of this week, uh, would be probably the earliest point where we where we will see it. This will be a redacted version of the report. You know, a lot of these uh, arguments go to the different evidence that's within this report that is going to be coming from grand juries, where you might have some things in there that uh, would normally be redacted and would be prevented from, from uh, seeing the public eye. Uh, and I think that that's going to be a, possibly a sticking point for, uh, that may end up uh, seeing the subpoena go forward if the uh, House Democrats feel that they're not uh, getting enough information and, and whether they want to see some of these things that are going to be redacted. So Attorney General William Barr is expected to testify before Congress twice this week on matters related to the budget. He'll likely be asked about the Mueller report. Should we expect him to engage on those questions? I think that he may try to deflect uh, when he's uh, in front of Congress, but we'll have to see how that plays out, because absolutely, to your point, I think he will get a lot of questions that are unrelated to the issues that he's actually testifying about. Uh, this is one of those situations, though, where I think, you know, a lot of this is a wait-and-see game. We, we saw, uh, as, you, as you noted, the uh, New York Times and Washington Post reports based on conversations with people who were part of Mueller's team feeling that uh, Barr tamped down too much, particularly on the obstruction side side of things uh, in ways that they did not uh, particularly like. But the fact is, it's out of their hands now, and it's now going to be something that's a political football. Uh, ultimately, though, that's, a, that's going to be something that we're going to see a lot of questions about over the coming months, even if Democrats want to shift to talking about other things going into 2020, other priorities that they're going to have for the country. The fact is that a significant portion of their base and of the American people still have a lot of questions about this investigation, what it, what it found, and, uh, and how it was conducted. 
All right, well, keeping with the theme of investigations here, Democrats formally asked for six years of the president's tax returns last week using a little-known provision of the tax code to do so. Mr. Trump's personal lawyer asserted Friday his client has the right to keep his taxes private. What kind of legal battle can we expect? I think this is going to be a pitch legal battle. Uh, the Democrats have wanted to get their hands on the president's tax returns for quite a while. It's been a subject, of course, of significant debate ever since he entered the race for the presidency. And I think that you're going to see this court uh, battle take on uh, a particularly uh, aggressive f uh, flavor in the, in the coming months, because uh, the president's really going to stick to his guns and say that he has the, the right as a private citizen to not disclose this. Democrats are going to use every tool at their uh, disposal to try to make him budge on this point. Well, meantime, the House sued the Trump administration Friday over the president's emergency declaration to force funding for a border wall. The lawsuit does not mention Mr. Trump as a defendant, but instead members of his cabinet. What is the strategy here, Ben, on the part of the Democrats? Well, this, it's an interesting one because this national sort of emergency uh, act that's been uh, on the books since the 70s is actually one that really hasn't uh, been put through the, the kind of, of legal questioning that it maybe ought to regarding the amount of power that it gives the president to assert this kind of privilege and to, uh, and to advance things. I mean, uh, we have national emergencies on all sorts of manner of things that I think people would be surprised to, to learn about just uh, given the way that this power has been used in the past. Uh, the courts have have never really given us the kind of resolution that we deserve about the limits of this power and what, uh, if any, there are. Uh, and this is a way to try to get that question answered. Well, the president announced Friday he is withdrawing his nominee for director of immigration and customs enforcement. Let's take a listen to that. Going in a little different direction. Ron's a good man, but we're going in a tougher direction. We want to go in a tougher direction. So what do we know about the new options being explored? You know, we don't know a lot about the new options being uh, explored when it comes to when it comes to heading up ICE. It's obviously been uh, a, a, an agency that has become uh, one of significant uh, one of significant controversy uh, in the way that it's been used under President Trump. You even have some prominent Democrats calling for the total elimination of ICE. Uh, but to be honest, th to me, this is a, a sort of absent uh, the larger conversation that we ought to be having about the nature of the southern border and how. Uh, the migrants who are coming across have changed significantly over the years. People are obviously familiar with the controversies of the past, where you had migrant workers coming across, usually, you know, single adult males looking to work and to send money back home. That's changed dramatically in uh, the in the past uh, year and a half to a situation now where you have family units coming across uh, in greater and greater number with all sorts of different requirements, uh, especially with young children that are in place now, uh, to the degree to which that Border Patrol really can't handle. Uh, the kind of, of uh, wave of, of migrants that they've seen come across uh, in recent months. Uh, this is going to take a, an overall solution that requires the president and the Congress to work together, uh, as Mick Mulvaney was saying uh, in, in the clip that you showed earlier. And that's just not going to happen on an issue where there is such controversy and where you know both parties uh, are so at odds. Right. It's such a complex and highly charged issue, as you all know. Uh, let's turn to the economy, Ben. On Friday, the U.S. jobs report was released for the month of March, and it showed that 196,000 jobs were added. That's a leap from February's initial reporting of 20,000 job additions. As we get ready for 2020, should candidates be talking more about the economy? Well, obviously, they, sh they should be, um, but that's not what they're talking about. I mean, the, the fact is that the, the controversies that people are focusing on uh, today when it comes to issues like immigration and also cultural war battles and, and disagreements about everything under the sun really is divorced from the uh, experience of most American workers who have seen their wages go up after a long time of stagnant wages, who have seen you know additional jobs and, and uh, hiring take place within their communities. You would expect in a normal political environment for the economy to be the focus, particularly of the White House, uh, you know, bolstering uh, their claims of being able to, you know, run the economy in a very effect effective manner. And the fact is that the, you know, the president uh, routinely pulls higher on on the economy than he does on any other subject. But that's not what we're talking about because it's not what the president wants to talk about, and it's not what his opponents want to talk about either. And it's not a quote unquote normal political environment, as you put it. No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, finally, Ben, the Affordable Care Act was a talking point this past week. President Trump said he quote never plan to force a vote to repeal the bill prior to 2020. However, that comment came after uh, he said legislation was already underway to do so. So what does this all indicate about how health care is going to factor into the presidential election? 
Healthcare is going to be an incredibly important aspect of this election. You're going to have a Democratic candidate who either embraces uh, the aims of or perhaps supports uh, the idea of, of Medicare for all in all likelihood uh, or some other, uh, you know, sort of broad solution to the health care woes that continue to be a problem for many Americans. On the, on the side of the president, I think, you know, he obviously very much wants to campaign on some kind of plan, but I think that he really has a problem within his own party on this because Republicans in Congress really, despite the availability of all sorts of ideas out there, have never been able to coalesce around what they want in, in terms of a health care plan, one that they can support and advocate for on the campaign trail. Republicans always feel awkward when talking about this issue. They don't feel, feel that it's their own turf. Uh, and until they can coalesce around something that they and the president can agree on, it's going to be very tough for them to argue on health care that they can be trusted and that the American people can see their costs uh, on this very burdensome issue go down. All right, Ben Dominich. Ben, great to have your insight. Thanks very much. Good to be with you.